Hey everyone, welcome back to 3D6 Down the Line. This is episode 65, 65 of the Halls of Ardenvul Mega Dungeon Crawl, Halls of Ardenvul by Richard Barton, using a heavily modified version of the old school essential system by Necrotic Gnome. I'm your referee for the evening. My name is John. We have a full house tonight going around the horn we have. Hi, I'm Mike, and for the next like 10 to 15 minutes, I'll be playing Darius Vile, <laughs> the fifth level assassin. <laughs> Hi, I'm David. I'm playing Mysophase, the third level. Well, now fourth, I suppose, because I did a session, correct? Not yet. Um, Just keep, we'll, get, we'll get to that. Oh. <laughs> Don't go so fast. Not so fast. I'm so so sorry. <laughs> uh, and I'm Matt. I play Avaricios of Epirenos, the seventh level cleric and left hand of Lysion. Hi everybody, I'm Ted, and I'm playing Mort, the 6th level goblin. As part of my work release program here from the county jail, I wear... <laughs> it's a court-ordered, I have to be a goblin, I'm sorry. Guys, this is why bail reform is very important, everyone remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, apologies for uh, Ted's uh, complete lack of professionalism, both video and audio tonight. Um, we've told him... Oh, that uh, he has access to some of that Patreon money, but he has chosen not to invest it in <laughs> sound gear. No, just kidding. Ted, I uh, tried using it to bribe a judge, and it didn't yeah. work. <laughs> Ted, Ted, Ted's off site for the night, so uh, yeah, he's doing as best he can. But we're glad to have him, so it's good. Okay, so um, catching up here. Uh, it is the sixth of Jelenios. It is three o'clock p.m. in another time and place. Um, because uh, you guys are in the depths of Ardenvul, and uh, you're in a tight spot. You're in a real tight spot. Uh, you are back in the Well of Light. Uh, your arrival in the, on that level with the intent to perhaps find out what was going on with poor lonely Trefco was interrupted by the return of Garalad, Sisko, and all of the baboons. Um, so you have cornered yourself into the corridor that leads to some of the big guys uh, chambers right so we have mort in the form of a recently polymorphed spider after drinking a potion is in isocritus's old chamber through the eastern door through the southern door there is a shrieker mushroom that is currently going off at top volume uh, that shrieker mushroom is in garalad's personal chambers uh, and that has uh, rousted a whole bunch of baboons to come and investigate and through the north door is the, um, it's not the kitchen itself. What is it exactly? Uh, hold on. The cook's it, bedroom. Um, yeah, it's the cook. Yeah, the cook's lair. Uh, Irsko's lair um, is where a group of, gob a group of uh, baboons also uh, came through. So currently we have two invisible PCs. We have Darius who is invisible using Laryl's cloak, who is scurried up and um, uh, up the wall, uh, up the wall and is over top the archway leading through the Southern door into Gerlau's chamber. And we have Mizophase who is invisible due to the ring pairing, um, leaving Nyal blind back at the, uh, the um, God telephone entrance room is hiding behind um is hiding in between the northern and eastern doors. Avaricios, who wasn't here last time, uh, pops into existence and is hanging out with Njal and Elizabeth back at the uh, God phone uh, entranceway, the portal room. Um, and and we cursing, have... by the way. He's cursing mm -hmm. profusely. Yes. So there are currently four baboons that are in between the invisible PCs right now that are like literally in the, actually let me switch over to Miro for the folks at home here. So, um, right here, well, actually where the AV, yeah, where the AV marker is, there are four baboons. Two baboons have entered into Isocritus' chamber to the east and are visible by Mort in spider form right now. In addition, Cisco and Irsko, two of the giant forearm baboons, are right outside the western door in that north-south corridor and were drawn in that direction because Mizophase had just cast a ventriloquism uh, and uh, we had rolled to see if they would pay attention to it and they did indeed, even over the Shrieker, uh, to go investigate, but we don't know what the result of that investigation was. Um, Garalad is nowhere to be seen at the moment. 
So that's the situation right now. It's very, very tense. And you've got baboons basically running around everywhere in the level again. So uh, one uh, mistake correction that has a pretty large effect on the plan as it is, is that the we went back and looked at the previous episodes um, w when they were in the Well of Light and the, uh, and the Arcanum Chunk eyes that were in the Ibis fresco in the uh, God Phone teleportation room, God God Phone portal room were indeed removed by you. Therefore, the um, effect, the the interval buzzing and a wave of of anti magic or dispel magic, whatever you guys determined it was, is no longer occurring. Okay. Oops. Um. So that is a big difference to to what. Okay. What exactly is going on? Oh, um, that so, is quite a big difference. Yes. So okay. that is where you are right now. Like so that. the shrieker is like <laughs> at top volume. Um, Garalad is nowhere to be seen. However, I will say that uh, we'll quick switch over to Nyal, Elizabeth, and Avaricios. Um, you are hanging out. Let's see. Let me just draw this down here for the folks at home. You guys are right here. Okay. Or like right within it, whatever. Like the whole idea was that Elizabeth would step out, cast Obscuring Mist, although it looks like that probably won't be an issue now. Like she can just cast it normally. Um, yeah, so you um, know, but, I'm sure we would be like chilling behind that corner so we wouldn't be in direct view. Yeah, so the room itself is lit with continual light. However, um, it's all darkness everywhere else, but you can see far down the corridor is that shaft of bright sunlight that is um, shining down the, the well itself. And you can see, Avaricios, that there are... Um, uh, that there, you see two dark forms flit in between, like like pass through that that light. You know what I mean? Like like, like you know, like they're, they're illuminated. Um, their silhouettes are illuminated by the light itself. Okay. One is huge, so you assume it's a forearm baboon. Okay, uh -huh. but you know it's probably not Cisco or a uh, Cisco or Irsco. Um, the other one is definitely uh, human shaped and slim. Okay. And uh, one thing, so this is just a, a, a question I have in terms of uh, preparation that we would have had before we did this little raid, right? Um, knowing that we were going to use the, the rings for invisibility, yeah. could we have worked out a simple signal usage ahead of time? Yeah, that's fine. Where, and the, the idea would be through on and off of the ring like sending the signal of, you know, invisibility that we could do like just three simple codes. Yes. Like one of the, you know, one code for um, distract, like make a distraction. One code for shit, run away, you know, flee. And one code for, you know, come, come, we need you, come. Sure. I love where your head's at. I no problem. Right? Yeah. So that would be, um, and I would, I, I think in general, it would be assumed that if the uh, invisibility was ended, that would mean shit was going down. Right? Yes, that's so, fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And otherwise, I think that we would be, uh, you know, hut huddled back in that corner because we wouldn't want to be silhouetted the way, the way those guys are down at the other end of the hall. Okay. Um, the other thing, and tell me if we should do this later or now, but um, Avaricious would take the time during that whole um, exploration phase to, if he can, commune <laughs> with Lysion. Okay, sure. What do you What do you um, ask Lysion? Okay, so he would, you know, uh, take a little drink, uh, pour out a little bit. It's part of the whole thing, you know, and. Uh, he has, he has three yes, no questions. So uh, he is going to ask first, um, the giant four-armed baboons, oh, great Lysion, are any of these guys under Garalad's magical influence? No. Okay. Ooh. Thank you, great Lysion. I very much appreciate it. Um, next question. Are the baboons likely to remain aggressive towards us if Garalad is killed? Yes. Okay. Last question. 
Is there another way out of the library of Thoth other than the door that we already know about? Yes. You know what, Lysion, you are the best. I love you so much. Matt, I love you so much. <laughs> when we get out of here, all, all of us alive, I'm, I, I'm going to build you a temple. I don't know how, <laughs> how, how or where, but there's going to be an awesome bar. Maybe yeah. one of those like ice bars even. Those came in more like sense impression sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, they're, you know, sort of like you just felt a, a firm, you know, okay. yes or no well, sort of I thing. give can him I, the I sense impression answer? back yeah. that he gets an ice bar. Cool. Can I, can I do a minor addition to this <laughs> magical moment? Wow, Matt. Wonderful. Um, for man's uh, crazy rap, Colt 45 and two zigzags. Maybe that's all I need. I think it's probably just sort of like a thrumming <laughs> melody throughout this interaction. <laughs> that's a deep cut that went over my head, but we'll, oh, I'm, I'm sure, right, I'm sure right. some folks over there will. We'll, right, I'll right, wait for right. the comments section. All right. Okay, so uh, so that, that's I a situation. Um, that is what's going on, and so it's uh, it's hard to kind of pick up in media res how 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 uh, moment by moment we really are. It uh, it is very very dangerous right now like very dangerous so um uh that's the deal let's go back to where the action's going on um let's go to the two invisible guys who are outside the corridor right now so you know that there's two very dangerous forearms that are beyond that door that door is open to the west but there are literally four baboons who have um been ordered by cisco to basically keep guard on Garelad's chamber. They're definitely more focused on the southern door then, but two have gone into the eastern room to investigate. That door is also open, and you know that Mort is in there as a spider. What do you guys do? I hide. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you're, you're not a problem. Like, Ted, you're not going to, unless you do something specific, you are, you are not going to be found. I mean, I'm just waiting right now, yes. Uh, yeah, I'm also waiting, John. I mean, we I have like a couple turns left on my Laurel's cloak. Okay. So um, after a turn goes by, the Shrieker cuts off. Like there's no yeah. indication. It just stops immediately. Um, but the door is still open, yes? The door is still open. The uh, baboons look visibly like happy or like some of, the, they, some of them had like their hands over their ears, you know, then they, they kind of draw them down and look at each other. Um, and they look like they, like they're waiting for something. They start to peer towards the west a little bit. Um, you can, uh, as your ears sort of adjust to the, it's, it's almost like a deafening silence because of after that after that alarm. Um, as your ears adjust, you can hear low grumbling coming from the west, like you know, like uh, like forearm baboon talk, you know, but low. Keep keep waiting. So, John, John yeah. is there? Um... I know with the lighting situation and so on in the hallway and crevices and corners being what they are, as long as I'm a spider, uh, I'd like to start moving towards the western door of that long hallway. I got to get out of this room. I can't be trapped in here if I pop back into Mort Farm. Full so you want to move past your companions and keep going all the way west? Yeah, just like in the crevices or corners. I want to get to that western door and see if I can hear what's going on with the baboons. Okay, so before you can get there. Um, as you as you kind of scuttle out from a bed, you actually see that you're actually following the two baboons who have looked briefly around Isaac Reyes's chamber because it's so Spartan though it's so easy to it's easy to assess whether or not there's anything in there. They determine that there is not, um, and they turn around and they rejoin the four baboons that are there. So now there are six baboons in between Darus and Mizophase. Yeah, okay. David. Okay. Anything? Um, oh. So many wrinkles. I love what's going on right now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take the pebble, the magic pebble. Okay. And the western door is open, correct? Because they came through it. Yeah. All doors are open, yeah. I'm going to heave it through the western door to make a loud noise against the wall over there if I can. Uh, through the western door? Yeah, just toss it through the western door. Okay. So uh, through the western door is basically... Uh, uh, you know, like the shapes of the two baboons are basically dominating through there. So we'll say like actually bounces off one of them real quickly and then, oh, and uh, you know, it turns around uh, more. You're kind of like, like moving towards them. Um, and they look back and they look angrily down o over at the baboons that are like right in front of you. Um, and, and uh, 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 Cisco turns around 
pulls back his teeth, you know what I mean? Just like just pulls back his lips and just, you know, all fangs just rah, at, at his, um, at his, uh, little baboons that are down the corridor and they all look like terrified. They're like, hee, 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 you know, protesting wow. their innocence. Uh, okay. While, while he is doing so, he's making that roaring noise. Mm -hmm. Is there spatially speaking a window for me to slink into gear lad's room? Uh, no, because you would have to cross through six baboons. Cross through them. Okay, yeah. So they did Darius the has a, uh, if he could make a roll, could probably um because he's above the archway up through the, the the lintel of that door you could do like a like a acrobatic sort of thing like you know darius like where you could like lower yourself down quietly and sort of slip underneath the lintel you know what i mean because the baboons are sort of in front of you my face it's it's basically impossible there's it's just the room's crowded with you know with baboons yeah totally understood totally understood yeah is now you have the you have the mic? you have the monkey crap that's overuse of smell is not an issue which is very very smart um but the um the advantage of sil of um the loud noise is no longer a thing it's good yeah i was trying to use the him cisco yelling uh to the same effect but avaricious real yeah. quick um as the the moment that the shrieker stops you see that it's obviously garalad is like the smaller form right um in, in there mm -hmm. um uh both he and the larger baboon stop in front of the well of light so you're seeing their shadows perfectly okay mm -hmm. and you see you can see and hear that um Garalad pulls out some sort of very strange looking weapon you can't really tell because of, but it's like an oddly shaped thing like a you know like a club of some sort um, is it the big thing that we've seen him use before you're not sure because it's all black right okay but he pulls is out something blonde? okay and then you also uh here he actually like raises his hand and like a little bit of a glow happens with his hand, and you can actually hear what sounds like the crackling of bark down the corridor, like like someone like like ripping bark off a tree, basically, um, is what you kind of hear. Um, and then uh, he he says something to the forearm baboon. That baboon, you can visibly see its top set of shoulders slump a little bit, and it stays where it is. And then Garalad moves out of your vision towards the south. The the bark like sound that we heard is that in the hallway going towards us. Uh, you hear it coming from from Garalad. Okay. Okay. As, as a result, bark. as a result of what he was doing with this. Yeah, game. I think it's bark skin. <laughs> okay. Well, um, Lisbeth is there, um, and two questions. Number one when she hears the shrieker noise kind of echo and then stop, is she kind of like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what they do. Like, that's about like, she would know what a shrieker is. Mm, Probably. Maybe we pulled her maybe. out of an inn. Okay. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, she's, she's, she's been learning, you know, she's, uh, you know, night courses and dru druid druidry. It's probably, um, I mean, if, if, like if she could weeks. peg it as a mushroom, she thinks it's probably a natural thing. Um, yeah. you, you invisible folk who are near that door, um, there was nothing changed about the environment. No one made a certain move, um, or anything like that to warrant why the Shrieker would stop. It just stopped. Uh, and I, would she, would she also be familiar with the sound that, I mean, she's in the same room with me, that, that bark, like creaking sound that, that he made? Yes, I suppose she would. Yeah. 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 Okay. She, she thinks it's probably bark skin. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So be quiet. Let's be quiet. The earth is wait. So it appears that Garrett is cautiously arming himself and defending himself and moving okay. south to investigate what's going on. Uh, yeah, he's no longer a like unassuming, unaware enemy that's just going to saunter by us, David, and get like fucking got right. So, I mean. I'm dubious about even being able to hit him with an assassin attack if that if it came down to it. Well, you do have a chance for an auto kill from an assassin attack. That's the that's the. You still got to hit. So yeah, it's a save though. Yeah, you have to hit. No, you still okay. have to hit. I have a plus four to hit. Mm -hmm. Um, and and then you know plus one with the you know weapon and then whatever the weapon well, thing it, is that it, I don't it, have. It, it depends on the circumstances, Mike. As we've seen with David before with his two previous assassinations, yep. I didn't require a roll. Well, okay. I was I was curious about something, Mike. I, I can't remember from last episode. Did you use or prepare any of those poisons that you got from the 
uh, goblin marketplace? Oh, we only got an ingestible one dose of an ingestible poison that's a paralytic. Okay. So it, believe me, if I, if I could have gotten something on a weapon, I absolutely would have. But yeah. Okay. So, um, uh, John, yeah. I just want to add uh, as a spider, I'm hauling ass because I realize that at some point David's going to let go with a cone of cold and I need to be out of that zone. Yeah. So I was going to switch over to you, uh, Ted. So, Mort, uh, Spider Mort, you, as only a Spider Mort can, you move out of the western door um at this at this point i'm going to say another turn goes by um as you guys are waiting there's only one more turn on your invisibility cloak uh although i know you can reactivate it darius um you move out into that corridor more um so now you're basically scuttling in between the legs of the two forearm baboons it really really stinks um and you're getting a, a very very good view of uh really hairy nether regions uh i was from, gonna say don't look yeah, up dude yeah um, I have I have eight that. eyes. I can't help it, you know. It's, yeah, I see it. yeah. It's just like, hey, just John, like wetness and rainforest. <laughs> just it's just nasty. John, question is the yeah. pebble? Oh my god! <laughs> rainforest was the word you just used. <laughs> I like to paint vivid pictures. Ooh, <laughs> go, go ahead, David. Sorry, Tarzan. I'm I'm getting uh, no right now. Yeah. Uh, um, um, well, I know I I oh. I, I'm st I'm I'm traumatized by sorry it, sorry no, no you're focus, good I focus. love it <laughs> I'm I'm, re I'm recentering myself here um, the pebble has yes. it returned to my hand or is it still in the hall somewhere Oh this was the 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 pebble um, the pebble uh, the well, yeah well it, it has not returned to your hand um, give me a second One, two, three. okay um, uh, Mort in spider form um, you you crawl right over that pebble you recognize it. It's very big in your view right now, but um, it is still there. Okay, good. The know. okay At, through the um, the wet predator like jungle that you are navigating right now. There is um, you see that coming from the north uh, stalks Garalad. Okay, he looks significantly different than what he did the last time you saw him. All right, so he is generally dressed in his grays. He has a um, a large mantle on, like a mantle-like cloak, uh, basically. Uh, let me get the exact. Uh, so it's like a half cloak. So it only goes down to about mid back, right? But it's comp it's comprised of pieces of oak bark themselves that are actually stitched together and held around his neck by a silk cord. Okay. However, you see that where his skin is exposed, it is indeed also bark-like at the same time. So his face sort of has like this really wooden sort of texture um, with his... Uh, um, and you notice at this point, because this is probably the closest you've ever gotten to him, Mort. Um, uh, you notice at this point that it very much featured in his wooden-like face are slightly tilted almond-shaped eyes. Okay. Um and uh, yeah, he, what he's wielding as he kind of stalks down the hall in one hand is a very strange looking club. I can't remember if you actually saw it the first time or not. Is um, this the one with the, like the saw blade thing in it? Yeah, so it's it's formed okay. of beech wood. So it's a um, it's a it's you know white with with black modeling on it. It's been smoothed and sanded and oiled until it glistens. You'd almost think it looks like alabaster. It's 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 so well uh, uh, smoothed. But on the business end, it's actually been incised on the top and in placed into there is a rotating multi-spoked wheel. And the spokes, the blades of the wheel are made out of lapis lazuli. Wow. Okay. So it's like a, it's like a crazy looking like uh, Mad Max sort of weapon. You know what I mean? That belongs like in a, the museum, John. I think like a goblin king scepter by any chance? No. Mm. <laughs> nice try. It looks nice crazy, try. but but maybe too nice. Anyways, so he comes stalking down the hall and goes right up to Ursko and C Cisco. You, you, anyone else, just feel free to interrupt me because I'm just going to keep going with what their plan is until you guys interrupt me. Um, so there, there's a little bit of something that um, Av is doing uh, quietly in preparation in that room. Okay. To, to get ready his distraction. Mm -hmm. He's taking just small metal objects like forks, spoons, little little scraps of of metal out of the bag. And he's very quietly and carefully tying them together with twine. Okay. Okay. Like a little he also he also pulls out thing. some sticks just in case. Okay. 
Got it. And Mort is trying to get out from under the feet of the rainforest and away from the feet of Garalad. So like to the opposite side of that corridor. Uh, towards the west? Yeah. Okay. Can I ask cool. a question on that note? Yep. Is yep. the western door open? It is, Can yes. Can you see anything through it? Mort? You yes. Can Mort see anything through the west where we heard the crack? You don't see anything earlier. interesting from there, but you, but you can see through it, and it shows corridor beyond. Um, okay. But you move in that direction, Mort. So in speaking of that, um, uh, you, you hear... Garalad, he like glances towards the east suspiciously because he knows that's that's where the shrieker went off, and he stops in front of Yersko and Cisco, um, and uh, he said, and you can see that he looks towards the west, and there's definite fear in his eyes. Cisco as well is also looking towards the west, and Cisco is like the nastiest forearm baboon you've seen. Like this is this is the killer of Squeegee, right? The, in Yonwen, the nasty guy. Um, he is also shying away from the Western door and keeping Irsko in front of it. Garalad talks to Irsko and um, the one with the chef's toque on his head. Um, and he says, uh, there's a, there's a very, very powerful ward there. I can't physically go in there. He says, I need you to go and check it out, but be very, very careful about that ward. Uh, about the glyph he says don't touch the glyph um uh but uh and cisco says uh you can hear cisco go bib, voice called voice called over in the west um and garlad's like and he whips his head around and he's like is that true and just goes like yeah um he, you know because cisco called Irsko over because of that and um uh, he looks over and you see Cisco just like negative negatory gesture. Like he's not going to go investigate him. He's too scared. Um, and Garrett looks and he goes to Irsko and he's like, go check out the voice too. I'm going into the, I'm going towards the, I'm going into my chamber. Um, Cisco with me. Okay. So Irsko is going West because he's the only one who, who, who is not affected by whatever is in the West to investigate the noise. Um, and Cisco and Garrett are coming towards you guys. More, you are just a, you are moving into the west as well, basically following in Earsco's footsteps. Just to clarify for everyone, uh, the voice to the west was by ventriloquism. Yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but it appears that something magical has happened to prevent Cisco and Garalad from willingly going into that corridor. As you, and you remember from last time, they were they were both sort of shunted away from there. Remember, but yeah. not Earsco. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Well, he probably yeah. hasn't been in there. He hasn't probably triggered whatever's in there yet, Matt. What That's if right. it's like another fear kind of thing, right? It sure I mean, seems like it because they both are visibly afraid. And you've I'm, never seen either of those two dudes look afraid. I'm thinking I should follow Irsko. I think that's a great cool. idea. Yeah, okay. I'll do it. In fact, if I can hitch a ride on him, I probably should. You probably can. He probably yeah. walks faster than me. Yep. Wee! Yes, it's like one step at a time. Wee! Wee! <laughs> Uh, okay, invisible dudes. Climb what are you guys doing? Batch, Climb up in the batch. <laughs> are you guys going to? Are the invisible guys going to do anything before the big bads come? Uh, I'm, right? I'm just holding that cone <laughs> or that uh, that wand. Is, is now the time to do it, dude? They're not there yet. I'm just asking right. if you want to still wait until they come. I don't know. Would you, would you say, Mike? Sorry. Like I'm just wondering, like when they're like walking up to the door, is that the time to do it? I think we wait to be honest, but it's up to you. The problem is, look, if Garrett closes the door right now, the going into his room and waiting for him for sleepy time is out in terms of being in the room. That doesn't mean he won't have to return at some point. Um, but our timeline changes, right? Like it's 3 p.m. I don't think he's gonna go to bed right now. If he goes into no. his quarters, how long will he be in his quarters? Kind of thing. We can still wait. I don't think ambushing him with Cisco there will have a hundred percent survival rate. We'll put it that way. <laughs> so, you know, so you think like, um, I still would like to have a go at Garalad, but I don't know if this is the window though. It is very tempting. I don't know. What do you think, Mike? Um, I almost think if we time it correctly, if I like drop down on him from above and attempt the assassination and you blast at the same time, we are you writing the, are you riding the lightning right now, Mike? Are you gonna yeah. write the <laughs> fucking lightning bolt? We probably Holy will shit. die. You know what, baby? 
If you're going to go for it, I am your ride or die. But that is on you. Audience, remember, this is on Mike. <laughs> I'm, I'm that that does yeah, sound right, very much like a frozen assassin recipe. <laughs> it does sound like a frozen assassin, too. But but uh, I've, I've said my piece. I'm here for you no matter what you decide. Mark. All right. Well, well let, me, let, me, let, let me just play this out in my head, okay? Oh, I hear so, you. I hear you. Let's do it. What if he's going into his room to retrieve something or to check to make sure nothing's missing, sure. right? Sure. And – we could wait and see if he comes out. The only problem is, is we don't know if that shrieker will be set off by an invisible person coming into the room. Probably it would be right. It's not like he's got eyeballs right off the bat. Right. So, um, so he goes into his room, he futzes around, make sure that mom didn't get into his porn stash. Right. Cisco waits outside in the hallway, right underneath us, which gives us a whole lot of opportunity to, to get caught without really any necessarily like payoff, right? If that happens, you could assassinate Cisco. Well, no, I can't. He's not a humanoid. He's not oh. a humanoid. Um, eh. Well, I mean, they, come on, origin of the species. No, but yeah, I got you. Cut off <laughs> three of his arms. <laughs> Talk to John about that shit. I already asked uh, him. I know, I know, I know. I got to hear you. But, but, but we could also wait, and then when he leaves his uh, room, then I could do the ninja drop on him, and then you could blast them. But I think either way, if we're going to make a run at Garalad, unless he's like, you guys go away and get some coffee. I'm going to take a nap in my room. Unless that happens, we're we're going to be in the same spot one way or the other, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean it, go ahead. Free, you know, free, free thoughts from, you know, several hundred feet away. Um, those spells and his, you know, alert status are not forever, Right. The spells, I, I can't remember what the duration is, but you wouldn't know anyway. But spells you cast on yourself will only last a little while anyway. Right. Yeah, including Little's uh, cloak. Yeah, but you have two more uses, which is why waiting is worth it, I think, to be honest. Okay. But, yeah, Ted wants but, to say something. Well, I just, um, I, I mean, I think I like this. I like the Donner of the Ride the Lightning, but uh, <laughs> um, you guys have a ton of magic items on you. That will, well, I have everything important we could possibly not want to lose. Yeah. My right now. <laughs> not, not, no, not everything, but a lot of not it. Not everything, right? but a lot. He yeah. also has the gold rod. We're good. Yeah. True. Well, I mean, there's the one of the two rings, and without the other ring, it's that's that's toast. Laryl's cloak would be gone. The the wand. Well, we don't even know how many uh, charges it has, so maybe that's not so bad. But I think my surface has a bunch of other, you know, various items. Um, somebody's carrying the teleport squares. And we drop those off in the um in the that's good the, the uh Elizabeth has those actual, okay but the, the point oh, being that they've got a lot of important magic items what's, what's the, what I, are we trying to say here the, yeah yeah what's the point the really, really valuable stuff my point of, is like you know don't die don't die, don't die. Please. <laughs> just just to clarify though i i stowed most of the like party wide valuable items in the stash uh you know i had like this the square and like the the the, the blue pillar stuff and all that. Well, stuff. But David, you couldn't have done that with the teleport squares because that was always going to be one of our options for escape, right? Or did yeah, you? I'm just kidding, I did it like three sessions ago. I mean, if you guys retrieved it, no, no. Here. So you know what? Actually, that makes sense that he wouldn't have them with us because we know the way through the secret door to get out of this level. Yeah. So we wouldn't necessarily need the teleport squares to be with us for that. That's fine. This was always supposed to be a reconnaissance, like ninja strike thing. Uh, and Mike, be aware right. that the assassin's assassination ability only works on creatures of four plus one hit dice max. Oh, just, just, just so you're aware. Oh my oh. god! This would be worse also, than worse. Uh, point of, point of clarity. I was talking about the square I had already had, the blue <clears> tile. <throat> the ones we got from the Goblin King. I don't know what where y'all put those. I didn't. Like, they don't have to be with the party. Myself. Yeah, fine. They're not with the party. That's great. That's not that's tied great. to my level at all, John. It's not like like if I'm a 15th level assassin, I can still only like assassinate scullery maids and shit. Uh, scullery like, maids would probably be like a half hit die. So <laughs> yeah, four four plus one hit die creatures are actually pretty powerful. I will I will say this not not uh, just as a reminder, Mike, not to undermine John in any fashion, but. Uh, in, in the no no like in the in the sense of the icy crisis thing we're, we're talking about this like mechanically what assassinate does if you stuck an eye in tresk or a, a knife in tresco's eye right, yeah. and made it like efficient enough you know it's it's a it's a move combat not that you Correct. should but, yeah you know. don't don't rely on the mechanics I'm just, I'm just really trying to get at least one assassination under my belt as a fifth level <laughs> All right, buddy. Okay, let's well, wait, let's, let's wait and call. see what he does in. The, let's wait and see what he does inside of his um inside of his room. We can also listen. Maybe he'll drop some knowledge on us. 
Okay. Sure. So point of all that is the answer was we continue waiting. Great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we did a uh, lot of exciting stuff in our imagination there, though, John. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> all right. Um, so you can hear um, uh, the invisible guys as as Garalad and Cisco sort of move down the corridor. Uh, Garalad tells um, Cisco in like sort of an angry voice. He's 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 like I can't believe that we were foiled. That that must be the entrance that we were talking about to the secret library. If it wasn't for look, you, you don't understand what I was able to accomp accomplish there in the Westgate while you were sitting out there picking your nose, Cisco. I was able to give them their chief slaver back. And they promised that they would help me in rooting out those cursed AV club members. But they want they want a very specific tome. And I know that Isocritus wasn't able to find it. He was looking for it as well for ages. And he was certain that there must be a secret library. And I know it must be beyond that door. It was warded for a reason. <laughs> All right. I just got real greedy. <laughs> Hopefully, Earsco can succeed where we failed. Now, let's check out and see what's going on. Out of my way, baboons. And they go squealing. So they, they don't go disappearing, but they basically go on either. Um, they kind of move t towards the west a little bit and on both the, the, they kind of line up against the north and south walls to allow Garalad and Cisco passage. So now um, Cisco and Garalad are right in front of you and the six bab regular baboons have sort of shifted towards the west. Okay, so, that, that, so your passageway out of here is still completely blocked. But now you've got the two big bads are, are right in front of you. Okay, and he... Uh, Garlet sort of looks around at the doors, look, um, and he's got his he's got his uh, big ass club sort of you know in his hand. He's very very ready. He's very very wary. He says something's not right here. So, Cisco, remain here on guard. I shall be in my chambers. And he moves in between Darius's legs and closes the door. <laughs> does, does does he look up? <laughs> He does so not look again, up. Not, not that it's super important, <laughs> but just uh, as a mental note, John, if the pebble returning to me is on like a timer of some sort, just like keep that in the back of your head. In the back of my I head, have I have a tracking sheet. I got all that yeah, shit down, dude. Don't you? Don't <laughs> no, you worry about it. It's all. Don't <laughs> tell them that. It's all in your brilliant brain. Do you, you know how many like things I've got on this tracking sheet right now for I timing? Don't want to know. There's a lot. How many, John? <laughs> a lot. I don't want to know. Would you uh, like us to track some of them for you, John, if that would help out? Yeah, We've I'd got love, the, love to track Well, you, you know what they were. The first one I got on here, the Shrieker. Then I got the Invisibility Cloak. I have the Pebble. I have the Bark Skin. I have uh, your ability to hang out up top, Darius. I have the Polymorph. And I have your Lantern. So there how you go. Many more, how long <laughs> do I have on the uh, being able to hang out above the uh, door? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Uh, actually, Good, well, that was a turn, so now... No, it's not a turn. It's not a turn. Um, that, was, that all happened relatively quickly. So we're still there. You've got one more turn on the invisibility, invisibility cloak, and yeah. the door is closed. You do not hear it lock, but Cisco sort of stands around, and he's just, like, glaring all around, right? And he's just smell smells, you know. And at this height, how tall he is, his face is, like, right in front of yours, Darius, right? <laughs> and Miza Faze, you're basically staring at his balls. Uh, with, with on where's knife no, no. <laughs> i mean um, oh, mort mike how you feeling you go you go into the uh western uh hallway following on, on Irsko's footprint and you see um Irsko looks a little bit worried because he sort of he sort of takes off his toque and scratches his bald head a little bit and then stuffs it back on his head again um because of what cisco and garrett told him and he moves down um uh, actually, I think David, more. You're going to need to map this. I don't have any mapping equipment here, David. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot that. That was were... just what I was going to say. Yeah, um, well, take, uh, don't 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 rush, David. Go ahead break. and just get it set up as you can, and um, I'll. Yeah, I'll it'll be fine. It'll be we'll fine. we'll retroactively well, map it. And peek out. Hold on. So I have to get my Cintiq out and like plug it in and stuff like that. So it might be good for an early break just to do that because. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's fine. Uh, we will. It's actually pretty close to break time, anyways. We will take our first break, and we will be right back with Map in Hand. Okay, we are back. Bladders empty, beers full. Switching over to Mort the Spider um, as he follows spider on, Mort, uh, on um, Earsco's calf uh, down the western hallway. Oh fuck! Uh, 
the let's see the hallway itself uh david is taking over mapping for ted for the nonce um the hallway basically goes down for 30 feet beyond that door uh, before hitting a dead end however um Irsko stands at a um he stands before a locked door that is right to the north at the end of that hallway okay and Crowded at the edge of that hallway is a whole bunch of like nasty trash and detritus um, that has been kind of piled there. But you can see that some of it has actually been. Uh, uh, what's the matter, David? Sorry, I, I was messing up the map. Sorry. I, uh, I, I okay. So mind. there's um uh, there uh, it looks like a lot of cobwebs and trash and dust has basically been torn off of the what has grown over what was probably a hidden door up until just a few minutes ago. And has been put uh, shoved to the side. Okay, there is, uh, there is. Um, uh, it just looks to be a plain door, but it has an obvious lock on it. There doesn't seem to be any markings on it, and you can see Irsko is sort of crouched down a little bit, and he's he's staring at it real close, right? But he doesn't touch it. Um, and then he starts to sort of, with his lower set of arms, um, he starts to um, root through the trash, and he's looking up at the ceiling. Looking around, he's like looking for the source of that sound, basically. But he doesn't look like he has any um, desire to touch that door after what um, Garalad told him. And uh, I can see the door. I mm -hmm. can but not see a glyph that they were talking about. Is that right? Uh, that's correct, yeah. You don't see a glyph. Arcantian door? Yes, definitely Arcantian, yeah. It just and, looks like the, it was um, it was choked with with nastiness, and um, it just got missed. It, it looks like they like the baboons used to like toss their trash down here or something, and because it was a dead uh, end, so no one ever went down here, and it was just promptly forgotten about. So it wasn't like disguised in its architecture; it was just hi hidden by trash. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Uh, it might have been a thing too, where because it's obviously locked. That anyone who might have interest in the door um, just didn't have the key, perhaps. Like, neither Garalad nor Isocritus. That could have been the case as well. Who knows? But for whatever reason, um, it looks like the door has not been broached. And I don't suppose that the lock looks like it would work with the bronze keys we found in Isocritus's laboratory, which were kind of big and chunky. Uh, let's see. What did he have? It's like really big, like yeah, yeah, I don't large think it's this, but, I, yeah. but I thought I'd ask. Yeah, good. I think it's. Yeah, no, no. All right, I think I need to get off of Ursco and not be riding him in case he touches something electrical. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably a good idea. <laughs> okay, cool. So you you hop off. You're on the ground, sort of around him. Um, he. You know, it's it's there's not a lot of room to sort of root through here, so he quickly comes to the conclusion that there's nothing here. But he looks confused because um, Cisco was very adamant in telling him that there, you know, he heard a clear voice coming from that western hallway. So now he sort of, when he determines that there's nothing there, you can see him like glare, like really angrily at the door, like the door has offended him. You know, like he's he's pretty sure that that there's some sort of bad juju. Like if he's he's putting two and two together, like there was a strange voice. Garalad told me that there's um, something's bad about that room, so it must be the same thing, you know. So that's the kind of conclusion that he's drawing in his very small pea brain, and he um, um, and he looks at the door and he sort of backs away towards the east, but still facing west, just in case. All right, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna stay put. <laughs> You're and, gonna stay put. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, is there a gap under the door? Uh, no gap, unfortunately. Sorry. Not even for a little spider. Uh, how, how big is the keyhole, John? That's where the damn clip is, man. I'm not going in there. You know what? I'll, I'll give it to you, Ted. I'll give it to you, Ted. I can't really make an argument there. I think a spider could probably get anywhere he wants. Um, you want to go under there? But uh, I mean, do it, do it. Do it. I'm going to die, but I'm going to try it. I'm going to go under. Okay. okay. Just, not to interject too much, but sorry, just to, to, to quickly. Because um, what's the new ape's name? Irsko. 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 Because Irsko is giving up on this. I just want John to to say, like, if there's a timing on where Irsko's going from now 
still whatever Mike and I may or may not do. I want to know where he's at. In other words, like if he like, I don't want to like allow him in the fiction of no, yeah, with yeah, Ted, no, to, like, I, I won't fully yeah. walk into our room. No, so I just want to throw that yep. out there. Yep. Um, okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, do you attempt to uh, breach the door? I don't know, guys. Does that sound like do telegraphing it, danger do to me? It, do <laughs> it, do it. it was the it was the word breach for me that. Uh, <laughs> Just, just ask it a question. question. It's just a does simple yes or no. Uh, does the polymorph potion uh, uh, dispel if you get harmed, Ted? Do you have any awareness of this? He has, he has no does, idea. John, no. does his spider sense tingle? <laughs> uh? Well, just based on circumstances, you know it's a very, it's a very dangerous place. Right, yeah. you know that you know, already. John said, "You know what? I'll give it to you, Ted. You can go through the door if you want. Ted. Sure, you can do anything you want." Ted. All right, Mark. There's decision time. Do you go through the door or not? Stuff. You guys are all awful. I want you to know that. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm going under the door. <laughs> okay, uh, I need uh, Spider Mark to please make me a saving throw. Uh, and, oh, versus. Uh, that's going to be versus spells. Well, that's unexpected. Yeah, okay. Come on, Spider Mark. What do you need? Silence. I love my save versus spells <laughs> is a ten, and oh, uh, that's pretty good. All right, ten or I higher. Have, I have Ooh. the a dice roller open, but I don't see anyone else on it, so I don't think I'm hooked into the dice roller with you guys for on-screen dice rolls. Right out uh, and see. Oh, just just roll a die and tell us what you get. Be honest. Yeah, add add ten to whatever you roll. <laughs> no, I got your roll. Spider Mort, he got an eight. Okay, no bonus, I assume. Oh, you can see it. Okay, that's good. I did that right, at least. Uh, let me just double check. I don't think there is one, but I'm going to double check. Your wisdom bonus would apply if you have one. <laughs> it's kind of funny. No, that's, how that's, just a, that's just a fail. Okay. All right. So uh, you uh, try to scuttle scuttle underneath the door. The moment that you cross the barrier of the of the door itself, like cross the plane of the door, um, you hear a uh, you and you can vaguely see. I, I suppose uh, you would see like a bright flash, but there you hear like a of purple light um, that uh, that comes from somewhere up above you um, uh, on the door itself, right? And then uh, an overwhelming sense of fear makes all eight of your legs curl up into a little ball and you go rolling right back out towards the, the hallway again. And uh, you have uh, but one desire, and that is to get the hell out of here as quick as you possibly can. You are scared to death um, for a certain number of, you know, time. Uh, okay. Did you just see God. anything? Nope. Didn't see is shit. Does um, was Earsco in in range of this effect when it happened? No. So you are uh, you are very very um, frightened, Mort. So you can go. I would say because you know that there is danger. Well, you could go anywhere you want. You just can't stay here. Which I'm direction? In the library, Hotel California, library. Was the library, library door closed when you left it? Uh, yes. Yeah. Then you can't. I was going to go under that too as a spider if I can. Yeah, you can, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, so you're going to make your way over there. Um, very, very scared. Um, Irsko, who made his way over through the eastern door into the north south character, whips around uh, and is like, whoa. And he, look, he looks like r visibly scared. Like, like, what was that? You know? Um, and he looks down the eastern hallway and you see Cisco sort of, he, he's. You know, he kind of looks towards the west, and he sort of shrugs his top shoulders. You know, and Irsko, uh, he puts a lip, finger to his lips, and he points down toward the west, and he makes like a negating ge gesture. And Cisco does the same negating gesture, like I'm not going to go down there. Um, and uh, Irsko like pouts a little bit in the hallway. And he's like, oh, and he marches back towards the west, like, like looking around. Now okay. is the time. Um, yes. More yes. by that time, uh, so more you scuttle underneath the library door. The library is as you left it before. You can see the baboon cubs um, playing around in the stacks, but everything's very, very, very quiet. Um, again, and they, of course, they take notice of, no notice of you. Actually, Earsco is down the hallway, can... so no no one can actually see Earsco at this point. I'm going to say another turn goes by. Your 
um, cloak Darius um, uh, will go out. I can. I'll, I'll let you just roll right into another one if you want to. Yeah. Yes, please. Okay. Say, well, John. What? No, 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 not yet. Hold on. Oh. oh, oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Ahead, sorry. Ahead, sorry. Ahead. I just. I. I don't want to be annoying. I, I wanted to time this before he repopped his cloak. No, and I, I get that, David. I, and here's my yeah. No, to David's point, like it's kind of important whether or not we're going to do this thing on Cisco. And then I have the other use to pop the cloak right before that. But David, yeah, now fine. there's two monkeys like standing there looking at each other. No, he's so, looking the other way. That's why I want to do it right now. The minute he turns, if you if if you still want to do it, let's do I will, it. I will tap. I will I'm tap the wall. The minute the minute uh, he turns, you yeah, want me to? Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. I I uh, wand in one hand, knuckle in the other, lean back. Now recall whether it's worth knowing or not that the door is open and it's blocking. Myself. I got it. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna tap. Uh, I'm actually gonna tap on the door. Knock, knock on the door, but like near the hinge. Does okay, Cisco so whirls yeah. around. Okay, as he whirls around, John, my spatha is out. And I'm going to use his distraction to, like, as he turns, he's going to turn and puncture his own, like, eyeball on the spatha that I have that is magical, but we don't know what it does, and we don't know anything about it. But I'm going to just try and drive it straight into his brain case. Okay, are you not moving, using your move silently then? I am going to use my move silent to try and make it so that he has no idea I'm there, that he has no idea that there is anything dangerous. The spatha is like pointed right at his face. And as he whirls around, I'm going to just jam it right through. So it can okay. use the force of his own body to kind of drive it onto there. Okay. So uh, for the audience who might have uh, been with us for the entire run um, and had seen um, Onweer perform two assassinations, uh, just so you know what's going on here, Onweer was able to uh, manipulate the situation and circumstances where um, they were, uh, there was no chance of failure, basically. No chance. Um, however, here... Uh, smell is not an issue, sight is not an issue, but sound is still an issue. So the way I'm going to rule it is that if Darius can make an actual move silently check, then sound is no longer an issue and he will automatically get it. If he fails, Mizophase's um, distraction um, will give him a very large bonus on his attack to hit. Okay, that's the way I'm going to rule it. So uh, what is your move silently percent? Uh, your, three out uh, of six. 50% uh, chance. So one to three is good for you guys. Roll it. Come on, Mike. No oh. good. Okay, oh. so you oh. rolled a four. So um, as he whirls around and you're extending with your spada, your foot slips on the wall a little bit, um, and uh, he whirls right into it probably. Um, there's a chance that maybe you just slip right off the wall without the, uh, the sword going in. So um, uh, why don't you roll to attack? I'll give you the plus four. For the surprise attack, and then I'll give you an additional plus two for um, uh, Mizophase's distraction. So you have a plus six on top of whatever your normal pluses would be. So then I would have a plus seven, plus we don't know what the magical effect is of the spatha. Uh, yeah, What? Uh, where did you find the spatha? We, we, we should have looked, uh, looked that up during break. What, I know, when? I'm sorry. So we found this. We've never identified it. It was in the room with the halls, with the trials, yep. with like the pillars, right? And then it was the officer Spatha where he fought like a bunch of his own men, yep. which was on the room that was too up and over to the right a little bit. And yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I remember that one. Like, Avarice just picked it up and gave it, he gave it to you. It was, it seemed to like enhance your dexterity in some way. If I recall correctly, if it does, that would be amazing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, roll, um, uh, roll with an additional plus one. Oh, fucking oh. Eight. God. <laughs> what AC did you hit? He rolled a three. What AC did you hit? <laughs> Well, he's not even here. Okay. I am here. I, I rolled it. I, that hits AC 11, John. AC 11. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you get a little overexcited, Darius. <laughs> your foot slips and you are not able to maintain your grip on the um, over the archway anymore. So as, uh, as Cisco uh, moves towards the other corner, 
um, your blade goes wide and uh, you appear out of thin air and you drop to the ground um, and then he stops and immediately turns around and sees you collapsed right in front of him. Um, he's like, whoa! And you see Irsko <laughs> down the hallway is like, whoa! You, all the baboons that are in between Irsko and Cisco are like, wow! And everyone just turns to look. Yeah. David. Now or never, David. <laughs> okay. There's two things I could do right now in this dramatic mode. I'm going to talk as slowly as possible to make everyone oh, done. Yeah. Please don't do that. And just, <laughs> just, just, speak it, just speak it in a normal tone of voice. You, you are the only one with any surprise action right now. Otherwise, I'm going to roll initiative. I'm going... Oh my God. I'm going to put as best as I can in fiction... I'm going to put the tip of the wand <laughs> as close as I can to Cisco's head. I mean, part of me thinks I should. It doesn't matter. Whatever. Just down the hall, dude. It's an area of effect. You're going to shoot the wand down the hall. <laughs> Come on, do it. Do it. Do it. Shoot the wand. Okay, cool. It will catch everybody. Okay. Um, if you are doing it indiscriminately, we'll also get Darius. You understand? No. no. So said, I don't, he I held it I don't up high do. and Darius fell, to the, Darius fell to the ground. If you want to get everybody in the hallway, we'll also get Darius. Can't aim it up. Okay. Okay. Mike. You can aim it up towards the Cisco and, and hit Cisco no problem without hitting anybody else. But if you want to get yeah. everybody in the hallway, you will no. also get Darius. I have 21 hit points, dude. And I have no ability to save against this thing because I have like a four wisdom. So I'll sweeten the pot for you, David. If you want to just hit Cisco, um, he will not make a save because that's basically like a dodging in order to avoid some of it. He cannot dodge that. So if you just put a, a you know, that wand of cold like right in his brain case, like he's, he'll take full damage. That's what I'm going to do. Yes, 100%. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So uh, wanda, So yeah, you you just come out of the doorway as he turns back around to Darius's form on the ground and you just, and you say, Phrygia. Phrygia. And how much damage? I don't even fucking. I'm so nervous. I oh my work. god! Listen, you guys are do? failing so me. Unfair. You guys pick the perfect moments to kill the pace. I right, listen. That's, that's why people watch, John. Oh uh, my god! Start rolling d sixes. What the hell does it even do it anymore? anymore? I don't. It really even says know. something about role playing games that like the this time that we're it's tense is supposed to be moving fastly is like when you're rolling dice and that's when it just screams to a halt. And, well, that's 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 all I'll say, John, is nightmare theater, and I'll leave it down. <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. Uh, it's at least sixty six. Uh, Maybe it's more. I don't know. I got it. Yeah. Uh, it is 66. Yes. I'll give you full damage on it. Roll it. Everyone, I love you. <laughs> Lucian, Lucian, be with me. David. Oh, balls. That was awful. What is it? 21. Hey, it would have killed me. It would have killed me. Uh, 21 <laughs> points of damage. Okay. All right. Where are you? Not going to kill him. I mean, good news. Elizabeth can see you again. Uh, yes, that's true. Well, it was it was Nyal, I believe. Oh, I mean, um, uh, yeah. Well, Nyal was like, I can see, everybody. which means that uh, something uh, automatically cl cl clues Avaricios that something is going down. Um, so, uh, Wanda Cole goes off right in um in Mizo phases um, in uh, Cisco's face. Cisco screams like a crackling scream uh you know as the pain kind of in, uh, encapsulates his head he gets thrown back against the eastern door we'll say um and he's completely taken aback by what just happened but he is indeed still uh, yeah david no keep going sorry i'm not trying to be annoying I, I my hand raising inadvertently makes this bad no keep going keep going i'll, I'll say uh, in a second so he uh yeah so he uh he looks like he's in a great deal of pain and really really shaken up um um Irsko, the, the baboons start screaming, and Irsko is running into the eastern corridor. Okay. Yeah. Can I make a movement after my attack? Uh, it's a surprise round, so well, what do you want to do? I'm going to fire and immediately run north as fast as I can. Okay, I'll, I'll say you can, you, it, it's a surprise action sort of thing, so I, I'll, I'll give you slipping past the door, like you were beyond that door frame, but that's all. That's the only okay. place that you are that's at. Fine. You're not able that's to fine. close the door, you're just really beyond it. Sure, sure. Okay, so you slip, uh, you slip beyond the door. Um, uh, the, you also notice when, you're, when you lower your arm with the wand in hand, that the wand has always been extremely cold, right? 
um, it it no longer has that uh, feeling oh. to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I thought so. Well, at least I got one, baby. At least I got one, baby. <laughs> Like go invisible as fast as you can, brother. I'm gonna make a gotta, lot of noise. We gotta win initiative. If we don't okay. win initiative, I'm fucking shit canned. That's all there is. Um, I just want to quick before we roll initiative, uh, Avaricios, do you want to do anything? I would say that you would, you would probably hear like commotion, yeah, way um, off yeah. in the distance, and you did, you do see Nyal like blink his eyes as he's like uh, something happened. Okay, yeah, yeah uh, he is going to uh, cast his. Seeing this is going down, he's casting his uh, sticks to snakes spell. Okay. And he's uh, s slipping the little uh, nooses that he's made, the uh, just married nooses of twine and jangly metal bits mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on the on the snakes. I figure that's that's probably enough for for one time. He's going to set them. He's going to tell them to uh, uh, go north. Go north. So he's gonna like go through the hallway and go north as far as they can, and then west. North, like the immediate corridor that's that's that heads to the north. Like the first chance he has to go north, go north. Right, right, right. I uh, oh, I guess I have to roll for snakes, right? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, you can send them in multiple directions. Uh, I mean, there's only one direction that I want them to go from here, which is away. Uh, so let me get my six to snakes, baby. I can't why not? That. Um, why not send them to the well of light and then north? Uh, I, I, uh we could. We could. Well, I just, just want. I just want them to to go. Let's see. Uh, let him do his thing, man. He's a genius. Just let six him go. Of, sticks of snakes. Sticks of snakes. Two d eight. Normal yep. sticks. I'm ready. Hit me. Okay. Okay. Roll. Oh, oh 15. 15 snakes, baby. Okay, 15. 15 snakes. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six snakes. Now, are they poisonous or not? Yeah, roll 50. Oh, yeah, roll see. 50%. Okay. Low is good. All right. Uh, where's my. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Clear. Come on. Why is this not my D100? Okay, let's just, this is 2D10. Let's see what it is. Uh, you rolled too late. I don't, I don't know what that is. Oh, yeah. oh that's, 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 that was garbage. Do it again. You rolled a 10 and a 10. There we go. That's it. That'll 47. do it. Yeah, they are poisonous, poisonous snakes. Okay. But they are okay, just married. Uh, yeah, so. so he's going to. Yeah, he'll he'll tell half of them to go north at the earliest opportunity, and half of them to go north at the next earliest opportunity. At the second, okay, they'll split up. Got it. So part jangle, of jangle, jangle there, as they go sli as they go slithering off. Um, all right, back to jangle, the jangle, action jangle, here. Jangle as as the forks and things uh, trail behind them. Sounds good. Okay, uh, rolling for initiative. I got a five. On, I'll do it, John. I'll Sorry. do it. Come on, Mike. Why not? Uh, Why not? Me. Why not just lose every goddamn roll I roll tonight? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, Irsko is going to. He plows through the baboons. The baboons are also going to be. Well, they're not going to plow through the baboons. The baboons are also going to. You guys are. You guys are. You're in big trouble. Yeah, we're screwed. Um, the the six baboons, Irsko, all run down the corridor. They, it's not that far to go, so they can all run and attack. Um, and we have Darius and Mizophase as targets. John, can they all so, squeeze past each other? Because, I mean, I hate to say this, but Cisco is kind of between us and them. They can get by him and still attack. And well, Cisco, we Cisco is going to um, move directly into the room with Mizophase. Falling Miser Face into that room, um, clearing the route for Irsko and the baboons to attack Darius. Okay. Yeah. Makes okay. sense? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, Miser Face, uh, you slip into the room. Cisco, uh, holding his head and screaming, ducks underneath with his uh, arms just flailing. Um, so I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say that two of his arms are out of commission for the time being, but two of them are coming right at you. Uh, the, lo the, the lower ones. <laughs> What's your AC? 
Um, I, whether it's relevant or not, uh, my AC is 13, or sorry, my AC is 11, but I do have Isaac Crydice's, uh one inch disc ring on, which we were speculating might be uh, a defensive thing. So if it's helpful at all, now you know. Yeah, that it, you get a, um, well, the uh, the ring that the invisibility ring that you're wearing also is a plus one. So, oh, so uh, I have a 12 AC plus anything that I surprised. That'll fix it. I'll be fine, guys. You have a what? Fine. You have a 12 or a 13? I have a 12 AC plus whatever Isocrates' ring might confirm me. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, where's my thing? We got this, this, and then they have this many hit dice. Uh, yeah. There we go. John? Mm -hmm. We didn't uh, talk about it, but um, uh, my spellcasters do intend to cast a spell this round. Uh, yeah, okay. I mean, you're not really in combat, so um, you can just kind of uh, do just, uh, Yeah, you can do whatever you want to do. Um, Woo! Okay. <laughs> hey. Okay, I got a hit is what I got, even with that roll. Oh. <laughs> Um, and another one, Jesus Christ, yeah. another hit, and then with the bite is a oh. uh, another hit. Unfortunately, so yep. and remember that two two of those two of those claws um, right. were not not in effect, right? Like you could have technically had two more attacks. Sure. Uh, how many points you got? I got thirteen HP. Oof. Okay. That's, that's got to be plenty. Uh, one. Uh, one. Seven. Oh. Oh. Uh, three with a bite. Um, so that's ten total. However, two claws hit. So he's a basically able to grab you and basically pull you in opposite directions by rending you. Yes. <laughs> you just got squeegeed. For additional six points of damage. Bye bye. Are you out? <laughs> Good to know you all. What are you? What are you at? I'm at. Uh, I mean, that's negative three. Okay, so wow. this is actually brings us finally uh, after many many sessions uh, where it was technically in effect into our new and improved, hopefully improved, death and dying rules. So uh, those of you who are AD and D fans, um, you will recognize it. Uh, what's a, what's about to happen right now? Um, very familiarly, um, you are at negative three. Okay, so you have to mark that. You are now at negative three. You're going to lose one hit point per round until you are healed. Um, and uh, you will die at negative 10. Okay? So make sure you track Perfect. it. You are at negative three. Okay, so uh, you just see... Uh, yeah, so Darius, as you kind of pick yourself off the ground and you see the Ursko and the baboons rushing towards you, you see Cisco just basically loom underneath the doorway and just pummel uh Miser phase and just rip into him and he just scatters his uh his form across uh into that into that um into uh Earsko's lair. Um Earsko comes pounding down and you see he's got a big toothy grin on his face um and he shouts out to Cisco he's like don't get my bed dirty I'm going to cook this one um and uh he uh comes at Darius um, and Darius, you are going to get the full force. It's going to be, it's going to be ugly, dude. It's going to be ugly. I'm not going to lie. John, um, just say I'm dead and move on. I have an AC <laughs> I mean, I have an AC 15. 15. I have an AC 15 and, uh, and 21 hit points. 15. Here we go. Four claws. Hit. Okay. Was that a one? No, it was a five. And a five. 15. Is a miss. Hey. Hit. Oh. Hit. Hit. And the mouth. And the bite. And the rend. Hit. Okay. It is a hit. I'm dead. So we have, let's see. Two plus three plus. What does that roll? Six. 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 Five. Total. Eleven. Um, eleven. Plus the rend is going to be another four. So that's going to be um, uh, nine for all of the claws as they rip into you. Is that right? No, I didn't. Yeah. I got that right. Yeah, nine. And then the bite as he chomps down on you is going to be another eight points of damage. 
Are you still up? 17. I'm still up. Oh my God. Okay. So he, uh, he rips into you, uh, bites down onto your, Dave, you're looking at me confused. Did I do the math wrong? I think I'm, I don't know. It disappeared now. I thought it was, I don't know. <laughs> anyways, what was, what was he, he chomps down on your shoulder two. and, uh, rips into you. Um, and then you were immediately swarmed over by six baboons as well. Okay. Don't, don't bother, dude. There's no, like, there's no way I have four hit points left. Just I'm dead. We don't know if you're dead. Well, come on. You got right. matrix this do, stuff, do you, Mike. Do you just want to be dead? I can just call it Believe dead. Believe in yourself. No, Believe I mean, it's fine. Come on, Mike. Okay. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 three. It's going to be that. You have an AC 15. Oh, so you're watching Arfax die in the, the uh, never ending story right now. <laughs> <laughs> I will say um, that they probably all can't get on top of you. I'm going to say like half of them are able to kind of squeeze in with Irsco. Um, what did I roll that first time? Did anyone see that? Oh, it's a 12. 12? 12. Okay. Uh, that's a miss. Is that it? God, this yeah, die nine. continually cocks all the time. What it's is it? A nine. A nine. It's a nine. That's, that's a miss. Uh, that's a, a hit. And a, a miss. And a One. miss. Hit. Two and ones. A a 19? Okay. Uh, no, you uh, got one one, and then you got two 19. So two hit. One of the uh, one of the guys who rolls a one should throw himself into Irsko's mouth. <laughs> That's only fair. Okay. okay, and then from two other baboons, two claws come at you as well and deal a total of five more damage to you. Are you out? Down to negative one. Yeah, negative, negative one. one. All right, start tracking. You were at negative one. Both of the formerly invisible guys are now down on the ground and are being swarmed over by um, large baboons, um, and it's pretty ugly. Uh, that was the end of the top of the round. Do I count for everybody? Um, uh, we at, have done the, stuff. At the top of the enemy's <laughs> round as well, the door to the south opens up, and you see Garalad standing there looking very, very put out and angry. His eyes widen as he raises his club. He still has the uh, bark skin over him, and you see looming behind him are two extremely tall, skinny, bipedal, capped mushroom sorts of creatures that are behind him as well. Uh -huh. Okay, bottom of the round. Mort, the spider, and Avaricios, who was nowhere nearby. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, I wonder what happened to my friends. <laughs> I hope they're okay. So uh, I would say that both of you guys are sort of like in this nebulous zone where you're not really acting. Uh, it depends on like what you decide to do. Like what is your general plan for this whole thing when you see shit turn sideways? Um, you want to go, Ted? You want to... Yeah, you go first. Yeah, let me just go first. Can I? Am I aware? Can I, I assume I can hear the screaming, right? The... Yeah, you can basically see see down there. You know what I mean? Well, no, you're, you're, no, you're in the library. I'm sorry, you're in the library. Yeah. You, you hear it, though, yeah. yeah. I would think Mort would be very intimately familiar with the sound of rending. Oh, yeah, I've seen this before. Um, and I have no control over my spider status at this point, right? No. Um, then I have a question, which is if I look into the library in InfraVision, is it lit in there? I can't remember. It's partly there, uh, right? I think it is, yeah. Yeah, we'll the, say the front is. part, the enough. reading room is, but not the back part with the shelves. Okay. Yeah, correct. Yes. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I think the only thing I can do is I can't not be a spider, and I can't really fight even one monkey, much less eight, plus mm -hmm. two mushrooms, um, is I can best honor Mike and David's sacrifice by finding that, that other exit out of the library. And I'm going to start scuttling under shelves and behind paneling and whatever, and just looking for a secret door being small. Okay, That's fair enough. Thing. It's the only thing I can do. You're, really, you're, you're sticking in the well, library. Okay. Avaricios and the retainers. What are you guys doing? All right. Here's what we're here's what we're going to do. Um, first, sorry, Miso. Uh, Nyal would Nyal would try to activate the invisibility again. Mm -hmm. Optimism rules. My viscera I, goes invisible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that works. Because uh, if, if it, yeah, it, it, who knows? I don't know if he's still there or not. But 
I guess it can it can be either one can be the activator, right? Yeah. That we yeah. determined. Then yes, the mitophase yeah. would go invisible. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we take that as good news. Uh, Nyal's going to put his hand on uh, Lisbeth's shoulder. Mm -hmm. uh, she's going to cast uh, Obscuring Mist. Okay. And Av, uh, tell me if this is too much. He's going to pull a mouse out of the bag mm -hmm. and cast Silence on the mouse. Uh, yeah, it has to be, you have to, the, the action. Well, no, yeah, yeah, I, I, okay. We're sort of out of combat, but yeah. Uh, one, hold on a second. One, two, three. I mean, if, if it needs to be two separate things, that's, that's fine. He'll just pull the mouse out then. Uh, no, it doesn't because I'm, I'm, I technically said like you're sort of out of combat ish, right? Um, I'm only going to kind of dive you into that realm if you actually start to approach enemies and stuff. Um, okay. so yeah, you want to cast, how long does silence last? Silence lasts, I believe it's six turns. Let's see, maybe 12. I got it, 12 turns. It's really long. One, two, three, four, yeah. five, six, seven, eight. Uh, eight, eight, eight silence, I got yeah, 15 it. foot radius, 12 turns. Okay, uh, so yes, you pull out a mouse, and that mouse is now very quiet. Okay, and he's going to keep that with him, keep the little mouse, you know, pet him, mm -hmm. be, be kind, and they're going to start... Um, uh, once the snakes have kind of cleared and they're making their racket as they go north and north uh, east, mm -hmm. they're going to make their way back to the uh, sunny room number two, the the uh, room with the the smash door that leads back to the pyramid. That's where the snakes are going. No, the snakes are going uh, north, north, yeah, and northeast, yeah. And we are in the obscuring mist with Elizabeth, or Elizabeth. We're going to start moving. Oh, you, to the, the rest east. of you are going. Okay, got it. Yeah, got it. Uh, okay. Heading towards that door. Okay, so as you start to exit towards the east, very, very carefully with the mist involved, you can um, hear the hooting and hollering of baboons, um, and they are definitely in the northern areas. And it definitely appears that they have been attracted by your snakes mm -hmm. and are moving in that direction. So that um, your path is, is basically clear. Um, okay. And you are able to reach uh, the door that leads back to the pyramid. Um, the uh, uh, so combat is basically over at this point because no one is in combat, right? Um, right. So we we will assess what the aftermath of this is um, right after we take our second break, and we will be <laughs> right back. Okay, we're back. Uh, beer is full once again bladders empty um, it's a pretty dire situation as we pick back up again uh, so I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm basically gonna give a um, I'll, I'll let you guys sort of get a, a third person point of view about what's going down right now in that hallway even though there's really no one to actually witness it um, Gary that comes out looks really pissed off immediately opens his eyes wide when he sees um, uh, the bodies down uh, at, at near his feet um, the um, the moment he kind of comes through the door, Cisco um, is about to reach down and grab the body, the body of Mizophase when it winks out of existence, and he's like, "Oh!" And he uh, and he pulls back, and, he, and he's like, he whips around and he goes, "Sorcery, Garrett, sorcery!" Um, and uh, Garrett kind of peers in there, and he's and he's like, "Is this? I don't recognize this form." And he kind of kicks he kicks Darius, um, and he uh, he's. Uh, looks up at Irsko and he says, strip him. And uh, Irsko just goes to work on Darius, just like rips off all of his clothes and everything like that. And he says, found this, Gerlad. Then he pulls out a um, a bronze pin inset with green jade that depicts the arms of House Basilion, a top-down view of a heron in flight, which is indeed your pass for the Arden Vader, which is only given to members of the AV club. <sighs> Gary looks at it and he goes, ah, it's one of them. They're back. I knew it. Um, there must be more of them. One has already disappeared. Are you out there? Are you out there, little men? I will have your bones for dinner. I will feed them to my baboons. And if not them, the Setites will have a word. You will not be able to travel safely within the halls from now on. And uh, Cisco's like, can I put him in the stew pot with the others? 
Irsko says, actually, I'm sorry. This is in Garrett's. No, we have questions to ask them. Oh, <laughs> <jail> again. <laughs> let me die. Let me die. <laughs> <please. laughs> no, that's great. Put that's them great. in the cells. God. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> Time is a flat circle, motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> they actually didn't learn their lesson from the first time. Now do they think about it, actually throw them in the pit. In the pit? And Darius, uh, your your limp form is is dragged bodily by like one massive claw um, uh, up towards the northern co uh, corridor. Um, John, uh, I'm gonna, I'm Cisco, gonna try and lose more hit points than one a turn. I'm gonna like I'll just bang my head against the wall. <laughs> uh, do you want me to roll, or do you want, uh, or, or David? Do you want you to roll, roll to see if Cisco roll, accidentally kicks against your inert form? I like watching you roll. It's more fun that way. Just okay. Running. I'm going to say there's a decent chance because like he, he was like about to reach into you and he's standing like right over you. So like any sort of movement would likely reach probably hit. Me. Jesus. So, <laughs> so I'm going to roll um, a four and six chance that he touches, that he kicks into you and realizes that sure, you're sure, invisible, sure, but sure. there. Uh, sure. Four and six. So one to four is bad for you. I got yes. a five. He doesn't that notice guy. you. Fuck that guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm cussing left and right. All right. Sorry, younger listeners. I'm so going to be better about it right now. He, he steps out and basically um, scans the corridor, um, puts Garalad behind him, um, and he is like, there's strange things going ha happening today, boss. <sighs> if we hadn't left Trefco here, things would be safe. And he's like, I... <laughs> I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm not ex very happy with the old boy, actually. Wasn't able to maintain security, even though very few egresses out of here. We'll have to have a word with that old, old ape. Um, and uh, Cisco looks very pleased with himself. Anyways, um, uh, uh, Garrett sort of wipes his hands like a, what am I trying to say? Um dismissively in the air and he says clean this up um, and he goes back into his chambers and he says I will be in the hall of judgment soon put him in the pit um, so at that point Irsko is going to drag Darius's inert form up the northern uh, corridor through the well of light and directly across into the north um, so there is a point Abricios and y'all and Elizabeth where um, you will hear and see them approaching and then actually move into the light that's um, shed by the well of light in that room um, before uh, I would say that you probably would have the chance to actually retreat back in towards the pyramid. So if you want to be blissfully unaware of any of those events, you certainly can be um, or you I'll, I'll let you choose whether or not you want to notice that or not. Or you well, can have um, these snakes swarm the big monkey. Swarm the big monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, I, I do hope that there's the snake's aggressive nature will uh, end up uh, uh, attacking and taking down a few snakes with their or, uh, baboons with their poison. Uh, but, yeah, I think that we would stay just, you know, close to the door to be able to hear, but have uh, Lisbeth kind of move towards the center of the room so that we're still within the radius of the obscuring mist so nobody could see us, but we could kind of peek in and out and see so that we're still kind of hidden by that, mm -hmm. but we can, uh, but the, that mist, uh, is entirely encased within that, uh, that it's the room with the yellow walls and that's, that's lit, right? It is. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So we're in, we're in there and average would just be like, you know, near the, near the door to here, but the door is closed obviously. Right. Yeah. As, yeah. as best it, as best it could. Yeah. Okay. So, um, yeah, so you can hear Irsko dragging Darius up in, in well, you can hear is it's Irsko Ir and Cisco and a bunch of baboons are basically making their way to the north. So it's very obvious, like like um they are obviously giddy with excitement and happiness. Um, you know, like you can tell that things did not go well for your party, basically. Mm -hmm, right. Mm -hmm. Um uh Nyal, of course, is still blind. Um and I would say too that you hear coming down from that northern corridor to the west of you. You hear a couple of like hacking simian coughs, and then something collapsing to the ground, um, sort of relatively near the door. Uh, 
and then everything goes quiet. Okay. The they, yeah. at that point in a long forgotten chamber, once known as Irsko's lair, where there is an invisible body lying there, a single pebble appears. <laughs> I love it. Oh, what good drama. Best DM on the internet, gang. Best DM on the internet. I'm just going by the time tracker. of evil, we might call it. But well, no. we, now it's made out of smoke. <laughs> I love uh, it. Does, 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 does the pebble cry a single tear? But if a oh. pebble appears and no one's around to hear it or see it, does it actually appear? <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, Mort. You are in the library. Um, as a spider, you have been crawling all around. Um, you have come face to face with a couple of yes. baboon yes. cubs who have who have noticed you, but un were unable to get you because you are you are you are a little fast little spider. Um, and you have gone into every nook and cranny. You have seen everything there is to see in that library, and you are thoroughly convinced that there is no way out of that library other than the front door. Interesting. Um, all right. Well, now's a good time to uh, move back to the main door. And if I hear not the screaming of monkeys, then mm -hmm. I'm going to head for where I last saw my friends. Uh, towards the east. Yeah. Yeah. In, into the into the, the hallway. Okay. So uh, where... uh, everything's like really quiet now, right? There's no one in that hallway there. Um, uh, meta wise, you know that Garalad is in the in his own chambers, but that but that door is closed. So, uh, but you you turn all eight of your eyes, uh, you know, towards the east, and you can quickly see that. Uh, well, yeah, I'll go into the door, and yeah. go down the hallway, yeah, and sniffing around or whatever it is spiders do, uh -huh. um, looking to see if you know any of our items were dropped or if I stumble across uh, one of my friend's corpses or. Or bodies visible or visible invisible. Gotcha. Okay, so you you don't see any dropped items. I should have said that Garalad um, uh, Irsko gave all of Darius's gear to Garalad, who took it into his chambers. Oh, um, and uh, uh, phase. The Woken's like John. The, huh? the, the book is like looks like a rag. So. Is there even a chance that maybe they just threw that on the floor? No, he took all of the gear and gave it to Garelad. Garelad yanked it in there. He might decide that it's trash, but it's all it's all in Garelad's room. Um, and Mizophase is invisible, and you wouldn't be able to detect him at all. More, I don't know if you could well, smell him. As, 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 I'm walking along, and I just bump into him. I'll be like, "Aha, <laughs> that's interesting." Yeah. Uh, we'll say like eventually you probably would. Like if you're giving a thorough look, uh, that, that yeah you. You, you hit Mizophase. Although you have real no knowledge of who it actually would be. It could, you know, it could be Darius. It could be yeah. Mizophase, right? Either one. It's got to be one of my buddies right, flying right. invisible. So Correct, yeah. I'm going to... You do see the pebble, uh, by the way. Ooh. <laughs> do a couple of squats on that. Then, Frankly, uh, that, would tell you, that would tell you who's there. Probably true, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to um, hide near Mysophase in Ersko's room. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm just going to have to wait out being a spider. No, oh, no. You know what? I'm going to go check out the kitchen real quick. Yeah, I'll go check the kitchen. And then go check back. the kitchen. Okay, cool. Nice. I love it. I love it. I love All it. All right. So you scuttle into the kitchen without having to open the door. Um, first thing you notice is that there is a very dead squashed goblin right near the door as you kind of enter into it. Which tracks with what you heard from last time. Um, looks to be uh, basically been, you know, just squeezed with a massive paw. Uh, but uh, your your instincts are correct. This is obviously the kitchen. There is. Let's see. Uh, David, are you still good for mapping here? Yeah, I'm here. I gotcha. Okay. So you're entering into that uh, door to the east there, and um, it is a. 35 feet east to west chamber and you're entering in uh, five feet above the southern wall on the western on the western side and it's a little hard to explain but the room itself is uh 
it's 15 feet north to south. However, after so this is a little bit tough, David, so you just got to roll with me. Um, You're it's, good. It's, it's 15 feet north to south, 35 feet east to west. However, after 10 feet from the western wall, there's actually a 45 degree angle that goes um, that goes towards the northeast and sort of opens up the room a little bit. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, that. exactly right. Yeah, then just connect those lines at a right angle. Okay. So it's, it's, it's a wedge like this? Uh, no, it's a, it's a, just goes straight across. There you go. Yeah. It's like a, at a right angle. Sorry. Yep, sorry. At a right angle. There you go. Perfect. Now at that 10 feet there where it's uh, where it's sort of narrow is actually an archway that leads into another room. Um, and you can also see that on the angle is a huge fireplace that is passed through, right? So you can actually, um, like move through it and there's, um, uh, yeah, there's nothing in that fireplace right now. Like the fire is not lit. Sorry, just uh, there's an archway here. You no, said, there's an archway leading was. leading to the north on that section, that ten foot section of uh, uh, right right there. There's an archway leading to the north. Here, I'll, I'll, I feel I'll, so dumb right now. Sorry, sorry. Uh, right here. I see. I see. Perfect. Okay. And then there, uh, right on that slant is a large fireplace that is also a pass through. Um, yeah. the, uh, there's a large wooden table. It looks like it's uh, legs were actually cut down a long time ago. That's only about 32 inches tall. It's been pushed against the Eastern wall. And on the table is a number of very bloody and very rusty cleavers. Mm. Um, uh, a whole variety of them. That's the and, worst kind. Yeah, and it looks to be scraps of shreds of, of like pink and red meat on uh, the table itself. And right next to that table is actually a cauldron, a large cauldron on a stand with no source of heat underneath it at all, but it is merrily bubbling. Okay? So picture like one of those uh, bubbling cauldrons from um, that Conan orgy see scene, right? <laughs> but no, But no heat. And I, I, I bring your mind, bring to mind that that cauldron from that scene because you do see sort of pop out of of the cauldron itself. You see what is definitely a uh, an, a hairy arm, like a humanoid uh. arm, sort of kind of come out. And then your eyes are drawn, uh, Mort, to what the source of that arm probably was, because on the south wall there are three large wooden bins. And in one of them are uh, a few gagged and probably thoroughly unconscious people. And one of them is a rat-headed beast man who is missing an arm. And it Jesus. doesn't look like it's been tended to at all. And there is also a, uh, a rather dowdy-looking uh, Wiscan who is uh, gagged as well with blonde hair. Um, and you also see that there are two goblins who are tending that cauldron. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. The, there is a fire in the fireplace and you do see, um, and major props to David from last session. You do see that smoke is rising up somewhere, uh, there being drawn straight up from the fire. Yes, 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 yes. Death. Okay. Um, in awesome. the other two, awesome. two uh, the other two bins, there appears to be um, uh, turnips in one, and mushrooms in another. All right. So they've got three of the four food groups, I guess. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. So the, the goblins I'll, are like purposely like not trying to notice like the dead goblin right right next to them. You know? Well, I've never felt less guilty about killing anyone on this floor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. These guys are the worst. <laughs> um, okay, so I really don't know. I, I mean, I, do I have a sense of how many turns have gone by for me? It's probably about eight, I think, now, right? Eight turns? Since what? Since I drank this potion. Oh, uh, I don't know how many have gone by, but I know when it's about to end, and it hasn't ended yet. Um, I will say okay. another turn goes by for your whole journey right, okay. uh, up to that point um is there any other egresses let me just check if there's egresses give me a sec no not that you can see 
Right. Okay. Um, I'm a little, I'm just a little spider. I don't want to get too close to that fire, but, um, you do not hear anything coming from the Northern archway, which is by the way. Yeah. I think I should poke my nose in there. Uh, yeah. So looking into there, you can see that it opens up into a, a, a much larger, excuse me, a much larger chamber, uh, that appears to be 40 feet North to South, um, by 35 feet East to West. And, um, uh, does it connect with that little five foot door off to the West? It, it sure does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is it like a dining room or something? Um, no, Shit, I should have been listening to map. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to Ted doing that. I was, I was, <laughs> I was reading our notes. Uh, sorry, John. I'm the so worst. It's, it's 35 feet East to West and it's 40 feet North to South. And it does connect. It, it does connect to that little tiny door there. That's got it. What a champ. Gotcha. 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 Okay. Um, the, okay. So what this was, uh, it looks like it probably at one point was a refectory for the, for Thothian priests. Mort. Um, there's the fireplace, obviously the other end of it, uh, uh quite large. It looks like it's like large enough to like roast like entire, entire animals, by the way. Um, there is one badly scarred and uneven table and uh, one scorched bench uh, are left in the room. Um, there are clear baboon tracks that run from the northeast to the southwest. Um, on the table is a flagon of ale and one turnip. And that's basically it that you can see at a cursory glance. There is a small door similar to the small door to the west. That is in the far northeastern corner on the north wall. Okay. What happened? You're muted, Ted. Someone duped the. Okay. Well, I was trying to dupe a door. I don't know what I did to that stupid map. Sorry. It controls me. It's those those spider eyes that you have you're seeing multiples of oh there you go. so uh okay what do you do? okay so i'm going to go back uh to um my phases hopefully still warm body and uh hide near there and hopefully i can turn back into a person soon because i've got a way to help him but i just have to be able to do it I can't do it as a spider. It should have been. It should have been a very tiny hit point a round, right? You lose one hit point around. So how many rounds have have passed, John? Uh, a lot, actually. Yeah. I mean, so, uh, maybe it may be too late. I'm not going to even make it to this pit of theirs if I'm losing like one hit point around. It's going to be like. Uh yeah, so they are going to. They want you alive, so they're going to do the. So this is the other. Another, another rule for our, our, our new death and dying thing is like if you are bandaged, um, you will regain you'll you'll go back up to one hit point okay. in consciousness, but the bandaging takes a full turn, so it cannot be done during combat. So Garlet has given orders that he wants to speak to Darius or question Darius. So they do bandage you, Darius. Okay. okay. So nice. you are at one hit point and we'll say that um they do it sort of on the move. And so that you get a full good picture of where you're about to be dumped, um, because you're you're conscious. Uh, I don't suppose they get swarmed by venomous snakes, do they? That'd be awesome. yeah. yeah. So I was hoping that at some point we can do a little uh, snake snake on monkey action. <laughs> um, uh, more unless you have like a really good idea about how you're going to save Mizophase. Um, I think what if, that Ted, what if you use spider silk bandages? <laughs> go uh, go Charlotte's web know. and and make a web that say you have so much to live for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I I'm, well, I'm putting I, you on the spot, but I I, yeah, I do think no. realistically that um, yeah, it's 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 a you lose a hit point per round, and um, at, at least a turn is going to go by. So therefore, Mize of Phase will unfortunately probably kick it. Okay, well, unless you can do okay. something, maybe that was too many letters. How about some whiz? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, I was so, at negative three, and I die at negative ten permanently. So we yeah. 
seven turns. I don't think I'm gonna live. It's it's seven Not rounds. Turns, yeah. It's rounds. Right, so it's like a, it's like a turn oh, yeah. and change. Done, oh, so. yeah. That's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, uh, in all honesty, he might have been dead before I even left the I library. So. Quite all right. Oh, that's right, because yeah. you went like searched it. Ah. Yeah. yeah, I bid the adieu. Oh, great. We could. Uh, oh. What we could do is we could. Uh, it's a bit of a retcon, but I could see it as realistic. If we wanted Cisco to actually bump up against you, um, he could find you and uh, drag your ass and no, dump let, you in the pit die. as well. Yeah, it's fine. I don't mind. I, 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 I didn't play that <laughs> Yeah, it's okay. Okay, so uh, yeah, that one. Uh, uh, yet another spellcaster. Watch the desk. <laughs> and I will never play one again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, David that's... henceforth played uh, plate mail wearing. <laughs> no, no. You you gave it a good shot. It was just bad luck. Um, but uh, that's all good. That was fun. Yeah, I, I, I'm very glad. I'm, I'm very sure glad I'm going to find a bunch of shit that I probably made a mistake for <laughs> next yeah. time. But I oh, feel right now that I think true. we played that pretty fairly. It, uh, no, I think it, it was, felt, I think it was yeah, abundantly it was sad, but... fair. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we're um, still going to camp out near there uh and when he turns turn into a goblin again he'll try and check the body and oh, he'll be sad and then he'll loot it yeah let's 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 quickly yeah. move over to we, that'll be some time so let's switch over to avaricios um avaricios and y'all and elizabeth what do you guys do in the um, retreat okay this is this has been a while mm -hmm. uh and that's uh that's not good uh his uh, avarice's uh, uh, inherent uh, uh, optimism is uh, <laughs> starting to to wane a bit, but there is the positive aspect that Nyal is still blind. So we're we're thinking that you know maybe somebody's hiding out, invisible. Mm -hmm. So nothing seems to be uh, coming in right now, but. There is something that, um, yeah, here's something that he could do. He's going to um, back away from the door. So the obscuring mist is still going on. He's going to back away from the door. Now he's going to, uh, I can't remember if I said I took the mouse out already. I think I did, right? Um, the mouse with the, the silence on it. But um he is going to ask, you know, put it in y'all's hands back away so that he's out of the, the silence that is mm -hmm. on the mouse. Yep. And uh, he's going to cast another spell. He's going to cast his uh, speak with animals. Mm -hmm. And he's going to make a deal with this little mouse, which is because he wants to cause some some more chaos and more trouble for these guys. He is going to off, you know, give the mouse some of his uh, rations and tell him about a door that is about halfway up the uh, corridor to the north. And the mouse will know it. You'll know this door because it's got like gross stuff smeared all over it. It's terrible. But there are some spikes driven into this thing, the big metal poles, it looks like. What I would like ask you to do, and if you do this, I will give you all of the rations that I have in my pack. And he holds them all out. Mm -hmm. And he asks the mouse to dig, like chew and gnaw at the edges of the door where those iron spikes are spiking the uh, horrible door. Mm -hmm hoping to loosen those spikes enough so that whatever is behind that door can get out. Got it. Okay. It's got the message. It goes in that direction. Uh, okay. So I'm just writing a note. Okay, cool. Uh, do you do anything else in the room? Uh, no, we, since Nall is still blind, we think that somebody that uh, Mice was hiding invisible so we're going to hold there. We're going to be ready. We're going to hang back kind of towards that uh, 90 degree turn so yeah. that it's an easy dash to the, the pyramid when it's time. Okay. So I think that uh, I'm going to probably rule um, arbitrarily, I think, uh, that I think uh, when 
someone dies and is wearing the ring that it no longer it no longer causes them to be invisible oh, okay so, so um yeah so when misophase finally expires mort uh you're in that room so you see misophase come into existence um, and you're shocked and dismayed as you, as you see what happens. Um, Nyal, you, uh, not Nyal immediately, uh, is able to see again. It says something's happened to Miser face. Or he, or he attacked. Yeah. He would, he would try to reinstigate because he think maybe, you know, maybe there's some kind of fight or something. So he would try. Right. And he would see that it's, he would see this not working. So he says that he says that something either horrible has happened to Miser face or the, or he took off the ring. And the ring is not on someone else. That's important too, because otherwise it wouldn't make that person invisible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I guess they're gonna wait a little bit more, kind of around that around that corner. Yeah. So that they're out of sight. Yeah. And see if they hear anything else going on before before they just bail. Okay, so you do hear baboons, but they're way off in the distance, um, and they all seem to be like in the north or the east. Like in that general direction, like nowhere, like where the action was kind of taking place. Um, but other than that, you don't. Um, moving forward in time, then, as you wait more as well, um, uh, eventually, after one, two, three, four, five, six, after eight turns, so after a long time, uh, over an hour, as you wait to see if anything is happening, um, uh, 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 more finally. Uh, and, and no one has bothered to enter that room, Mort. By the way, like no one, no one's answered. The goblins, uh, by the way, have uh, done their done their cooking, and in that time as well, they uh, uh, it looks like they were probably given orders to cook their own person, but they just can't bring themselves to do it. So Aww. they actually take the body um, when they realize that no one's coming in anytime soon. They sort of give a kind of furtive look, and they actually throw their um, companion. They strip him of all his stuff, um, they, which he didn't have much because they're basically like slaves. But they, um, but they actually foist him onto the fire, um, and uh, immolate him on the fire. Um, they kind of, you know, it's and they're they're sad and it's pretty awful and they just they just look like miserable. Um, uh, and then, I'm actually in the room with my Sophia's body, though. Not with the yeah. kitchen. Not in the kitchen, right? Okay, yeah, yeah, true. Okay. Um, did you close that door behind you then? I didn't did have you? to open it. I'm a spider. Oh, right. Okay, so sorry. Yeah, so none <laughs> of that you would have seen. Maybe you would have heard it. Um, anyways, but yeah, so behind that closed door, because I was going to say you're about to pop up in existence with <laughs> with these goblins there, um, but you do. So the the eventually after eight turns, the potion actually wears off and you boom, 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 and you're, you're back to being Mortis and uh, uh, you stand over, unfortunately, the 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 body of your friend. Um, you've gotten to know right. quite well um, so with a, a, double, a single a, a single pebble next to him. I will double check that uh, he is really dead, mm -hmm. and and then I will um, loot the body so that nothing gets left behind. I'm going to particularly take the ring and activate it. Okay, okay. I don't want to do detail by detail, but do you can you visualize on your character sheet that you have enough space to carry that shit? Most of it. I have very little on me. I'll, I'll I'll bring up the sheet again. You probably do. I just kind of I just kind of want to know generally. Well, it, it's probably going to bring you down to a bracket, right? A, a movement I have, bracket. I have um, one, two, three, four slots before I drop movement. You're good. Uh, okay. Good. All I have on me is a scroll case, which you take my spell book, water rations ditch, a rusty dagger on where's old dagger you can ditch. RIP. Uh, the wand, I don't know if we can recharge it. You might take it, you might not. And then a bunch of non-encumbering items. So, I, I mean, we'll do that off camera, but you're, you're fine. fine. I take the as well. So, so you stay at 90, though? Or do you drop I down to 60? I can stay at 90, yeah. Okay, great. Cool. Just uh, make a note to, to, we need to reconcile moving that gear over to you. Okay. Um, uh, meanwhile, Darius, uh, you are getting your ass dragged uh, to the north, and you are brought right into the Hall of Judgment. You uh, groggily wake up in intense pain um, as you've got these nasty bandages sort of wrapped around you to stop the bleeding. Um, you have a horrible gaping wound on your shoulder, which is likely to become infected, um, and, um, and uh, your midsection is just torn to shreds by claws. 
and you wake up and you're sort of like Russell Crowe and Gladiator where you feel like yourself like gliding across the <laughs> across the ground going to Elysium <laughs> sort of thing. Um, brushing the wheat. Yeah, you're like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just brushing the weed of your farm. But then you realize where what the horrible place you are right now as it all comes <laughs> slamming back it's not weed, along, it's monkeys. <laughs> along with the pain. Um, and you know as you sort of groggily move your head. So, uh, actually, Darius, you never, you wouldn't have recognized this, but out of the corner of your peripheral vision, as you look in one direction behind you, you see something huge and gleaming and red and faceted, you know, and even in this state, you're like, that's probably worth a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> as you, as you see the, uh, the Ruby throne before you, however, um, no sooner do you sort of take, uh, uh, take stock of that, um, as you're moving between a set of pillars, moving from North to South and they sort of veer off in front of that throne and uh let me just see how this is set up here um da, da, da. there is a uh uh there is a sorry i just gotta see what this is here right a dirty rug that is basically uh, two two dirty rugs that are kind of covering uh sections of the floor there and the western one uh, let's see. Mm -mm. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Why not? Okay. So yeah. So the Western one, they the 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 baboons pull yank the rug out and they reveal like a trapezoidal pit that's sort of on the Western one, and um, you are upended into it. Okay, can I try and angle my head so it goes down first so I can try and kill myself? Do you want it to kill yourself? Well, here's the thing. If they're throwing somebody with one hit point into a pit, they're not very fucking bright. So they're going to have to come. I'm just trying to annoy them. So, like, I probably won't die, but they're going to have to come down and bandage me again, John. And I'm just going to keep fucking with them. And, yeah, so I'm going to go try and go head first. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> Talk uh, to me. They, they, they don't want to kill you. They don't want to kill you. So Mike. <laughs> when I say like dump you in, they, they were probably you know they don't really want to further. They don't want to. They've been told not to harm you anymore, right? But they're better yeah, unceremoniously sort of dump you. If, like that. if, if you want to attempt, it. if you want to attempt to um uh, uh hurt yourself more though, um you can you can take damage. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Just. Just to annoy them, they're, oh. they're going to have to come down and bandage me again, and it's going to be hilarious. And I'm just going to do this over and over again. Okay. No, no. Oh, come on. I'm. I'm just being. I'm sorry. I'm just being stupid. Uh, all right. I'm in the pit. And wait, is this the the eastern pit or the western pit? This is the western pit. The western one. Okay. Yeah. Um. Actually, would they right. do that? They're I don't know if they do that. Hold on, I got to. But look I think here. you're telling David to draw another pit. <laughs> no, I'm nope. just reminding I'm, everyone. I'm that totally laughing no. on my on it's my. A, uh, they're not going to okay, do that. I'm I'm, I'm retro. Can... I'm retro. Hold on, they're retro doing that. The the what is in the pit um, will not allow them to actually put you in there. Um, I'm surprised because there was an Otiug down there for sure. In the east, in the, in the eastern one, there was yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um. However. There is, I got to take a look at this room again. Hold on. I'm sorry. It's a detailed room. Just put uh, him in jail. Yeah. So, so there, was, there, was, there was like that column a, in the center, right? Yeah, where the guy just, was chained up. Yeah. I got it. Yeah. So there's a dais that's closer to the columns um, and it's a marble triangle um, and there's a black iron 10 foot tall uh, uh, punishment post, two sets of shackles in it. Um, and you are going to be uh, shackled onto that. So you are right in the middle of the room on this dais that is basically right in front of the Ruby throne in order to face judgment by Garalad the gray. Nice. Um, so, so you were shattered, and you're, like, you're like groggy, just like, uh, you know, you just every, every inch, uh, every inch of you is, is the uh, tortured prisoner sort of thing. You know, um, I just did crisscross applesauce, like Subutai and Conan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, and you see sort of, they strap you, the, the baboons all shackle you in and Cisco sort of comes around the front. Um, and you can just see him grinning down at you with his massive fangs and you can see your blood on, uh, his, 
Well, actually, Cisco wasn't the one that got you. Yeah, never mind. But you see your friend's blood on uh, on his teeth and on his uh, on his paws. Um, and he says, "I'm gonna try and egg him on, John." Oh, go ahead. He's saying something. Huh? Oh, he's just he's egging you on. He's like, "You're." I'm just go gonna ahead. say, you know, you smell bad, right? Like you know that you smell bad. Man, my shoe leather is smarter than you. He cuffs you so I hard got- that he that he knocks you back into unconsciousness. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like and you're out okay okay so uh we are going to leave it there that's a perfect place God to end it, it. <laughs> so we have darius taught tied the post mise phase is dead uh mort is now in goblin form um standing over the body and not mise phase as taking his gear and um avaricios and the retainers are uh relatively safe back towards the pyramid with an easy exit out of here should it be required so all is not lost but uh definitely definitely a big l for the av club tonight <laughs> oh, i think we still got him guys i think we still got him let's just double down yeah he's oh, not boy. suspecting anything now you know, be hilarious no one expects if, the dead <laughs> if, if avaricius comes into that room and sees mort Standing over Misa Face's dead body being looted. Mort's like, oh, I didn't do nothing. No, I, I swear, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. So yeah, that was that was pretty brutal. Pretty we'll see how they see how they handle things next time. But uh yeah, rough, rough stuff. All right, thanks uh, everybody for watching 3D6 down the line, the most criminally underwatched actual play series on the internet. Please do not forget to like and subscribe. And uh if you feel in you uh hook up with the patreon please that would be awesome it helps us out it all goes back into the channel and uh, we could not do it without our lovely patrons especially those of the conqueror tier um those kind of folks are the logan family uh kobrowski's declan koneski chad cartier magic meat machine dale brady tom leary phil g tokyo time terry barney eric lawson mando nz faisal james doig robert valdez grunt andrew schroker mm michael schilling stefano di maiolo the hex brawler twins Summon Toast, Adam the DM, Jib Cutter, Scott Yearsley, Mech Jack, Kick Maniac, Dire Gru, Not Matt, but not least, and then the Matts, Matt Mason, Matt Gardner, Matt Koenig, and Matt Young. Thank you very much, everyone, for your continued support. And one last shout out to a very special longtime listener, John, from his lovely wife, La. Happy ninth anniversary, John, and happy anniversary to you both from all of us here at 3d6 down the line awesome job guys many happy returns uh we will see all of you next week have a great time everybody bye now see you thank you john